Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Oh, welcome to Rock Solid Radio. I'm Linda Hutchinson, the executive director of Rock Solid Radio and Rock Solid Families. And I'm here with the man of the month, Merle Hutchinson. And you know it. (laughs) And you know it. Yeah, this is my month, isn't it? This is, yeah. Man Uh, of the month. It's your birthday birthday. this month. It's Father's Father's Day. Day. While we're at it, let's throw in Flag Day. (laughs) Does that make it your month when it's Flag Day? No, I don't know. But hey, it's a patriotic (laughs) thing to do. Yeah. It is my month. This is is. the one I look forward to. Okay. So I've got a question for you. Okay. (laughs) So I got two questions for you. One is, what was the best gift you ever got on your birthday or Father's Day that you could remember? Best gift. What, what did I give you? Oh, wait, that you gave me? <laughs> okay, no, maybe it wasn't me. Maybe it was just somebody else. But like, what's been the best gift you remember? The best gift ever that I got. Like, you know, um, I got a dirt bike. When I was 14 years old, oh I got a gosh, dirt bike. Oh my gosh, you went bike. all the way down back to your well, 14. Well, that was huge because <laughs> I had been wanting a dirt bike mm. and that was uh, something that I was not really expecting. And my dad came home from work and um, I looked in the back of his vehicle and um what is that? And he's like, well, what do you think that is? And I'm oh. like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so. you tried to do that with our youngest son and that that kind of backfired. <laughs> well, you know, we did all the you great- You tried to do exactly the same thing. I tried to do the thing. exact same thing and uh, he basically, never mind. That's, a, oh, that's yeah. not a very that's a good whole story. Show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so that was your best gift. Well, huh? like in terms of something that just was so fun okay. and exciting and surprising, Um yeah. yeah. How about yeah. the? How about, I'm afraid to ask this one because I have a feeling it's with me. Well, how about some of your worst gifts? Oh, oh man. no, I'm afraid. Sometimes when we do this show, we have to go get coaching <laughs> afterward, afterward to see how. Um, well, one of the things that I'll just say that you are challenged with, Hun, is you. Um, you tend to buy me what you think I want, <sighs> and you buy. Come on, ladies. Silly, I'm sure I'm not the only silly one. Silly little goofy things <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, you needed the some underwear dad, mug. <laughs> or something. And I'm just like, uh, and I think what's happened is you get older, I know exactly what I want, you know, yes. like, especially in the realm of toys. And, and when, you like toys. And, 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 <laughs> and when you try to buy a toy, you look for a cheaper version yeah. or a deal. And it just, it, it never goes well. And then, <laughs> then I'm in a weird spot. Like I'm trying to like, I want to like this and appreciate it. Uh, so anyway. I've given up. I've given up trying to surprise <clears throat> you with things that um, I think you'll like. If you have not specifically said it, I'm not going to just guess and hope that, because it's not going to work out well. I remember when I, yeah, I, I won't even go down the road, but I tried to do things <laughs> that I thought you would like. And then, yeah. But so with Father's Day coming up, we really want to talk and identify what is it that men really do want. You know, ladies, you're probably out on the hunt for your dad or your husband, or maybe your adult sons. We have adult sons who are dads. Mm -hmm. And so Father's Day is coming up for them. And so what is it that you can get for your men, do for your man? Because we're really not talking about things that you go on Amazon and order. We're really not talking about things that you even spend money on, Mm -hmm. but they are priceless to your men in the in your life. And so men, I just want you to listen. If you're a man listening, I want you to listen and really chime in, share the show, comment on the show. Like, are we hitting the nail on the head of what you really do want from those that love you? My goal for this show would be that um, mm-hmm. a lot of times when we do strong dads, the women listen to some strong mm-hmm. dads and then they go, you need to listen to this. And they, <laughs> so this hopefully will be a show where the men listen to it and go, mm. you need to listen to this yeah. to their wife. Well, right. Um, and mostly, I think what we really want to talk about today is the idea of um, there's, there's no hiding the idea of how important we think 
um, men are and dads are mm -hmm. in this function of family. And obviously there's no question about how important the moms are, okay? But over the years, moms have more likely, you know, stayed in the picture, whether, uh, whether it's raising the kids or being involved. And it's been dads that have been mm -hmm. kind of kicked to the side culturally. And so we are paying a huge price for that. Mm -hmm. And there has to be a revival of fatherhood in this country like we've never seen before. If we are going to truly deal with things like mass shootings, drug addictions, homelessness, um, drop, dropping out of school, um, losing our faith, kids who lose their faith or have no faith, that is a father condition. Mm. Those are symptoms of fatherlessness or broken father mm. um, situations. And so I don't, you know, it, it's frustrating because I do work with the men and I, I saw them work with a man of bad intentions, mm. like a guy who I just feels like, man, this dude's kind of evil. Mm. That's not what I see. What I see are a lot of broken men who are lost and who really don't know how to come back in mm. to to be the father they want to be or the husband. And so a bit of our messaging today is hopefully helping the ladies, the moms mm. say, hey, you don't want to go this alone mm. and let's bring in the best man that you can. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you help make him the best man mm. that he is? Yeah. And, and again, I mean, he needs to be making you the best mom and wife that mm -hmm. you can be. But we really, being Father's Day, we're going to put the focus yeah. more towards what we can do for the dads and for so the, the men. So before we go any further, happy Father's Day <clears> coming <throat> up this week to all of our men and dads out there. And so we really want to celebrate you. We want to lift you up. We want to encourage you. And we're hoping this show does that. And ladies, we're here to help, like you said, hon, figure out how we can come together with the men in our life to really... Um, build them up and to give them the gifts really that they are desperately seeking. But before we do that, we need to thank our sponsors. Yeah, let's thank our sponsors. We want to thank the Hummel Insurance Group, Casey's Outdoor Solutions, and Maxwell Construction for coming alongside Rock Solid Radio and being supporters of the work and the messaging that we put out. And so mm -hmm. we want to thank those guys. If you do any business uh, with any of those companies, please thank them for just uh, having a willingness to support this kind of messaging. Yeah. And if you are married, we would love for you to consider joining us for our next round of Rock Solid Marriages, which is a seven-step, 10-week program, an online coaching program for couples that Merle and I have written and we lead. It involves uh, a weekly Zoom call as a group with a small group of couples. It involves one-on-one -on -one coaching with Merle or I as a coach. It involves a, a whole um, full workbook with homework assignments that you two do as a couple and come back and give feedback on in our Zoom calls and our coaching sessions. And so it's a community of people, hun. And this isn't really just for those who are ready to throw in the towel. This is for anyone who wants to go to the next level. Right. Those good marriages that want to get great, those, those struggling marriages that want to get good and great. I mean, we're talking about any couple who has a desire and a commitment to really work toward a better relationship. That's you. And we would love for you to join us. And so we're going to be launching at the end of this month. So we would love for you to connect with us. You can get a hold of us through rocksolidfamilies.org. Just hit our contact button and say, hey, I'm interested in rock solid marriages. Tell me more. Can we set up a short little Zoom call and see if this is the right fit for you? But we're going to be launching at the end of the month. So the time is now if you're interested. Yeah. Help us out to get a little mm -hmm. bit of background work and information on you. And let's get that rolling. We're going to quit settling for uh, mm. our marriage is what it is. Oh. Uh, quit settling and l let's um, kind of up our whole performance level within that marriage in terms of what it's actually going to produce, not just for us in the marriage, but for our kids. A lot of this is for the next generation by giving them uh, the, the tools and, and modeling what a good, strong marriage looks like. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me quiz you. Okay. If I was to Google, which I, I did. I don't like when you quiz me. <laughs> if I was at to school, Google. you were always better than me, except for like in sex ed class. You're I was right. the only one I beat you on. But You're otherwise, right. when you and quiz me, you always do better. It's funny how you just threw that in there. Well, you know, because you know? hey, it's Father's Day and we're going to be talking about what men like, <laughs> it you know? It was, um, 
<laughs> it was college. It just threw you off guard, right? Yes, there, it did. I, yeah. <laughs> um, we're both education majors at NKU, North mm-hmm. Kentucky University, and um, you and I had a lot of yep. classes that were similar. Yep. And one of those classes that um, you did, the only class you did better than me was... Every like, class, <laughs> she'd get an A and I'd get a B. <laughs> You're borrowing my books, you know, yeah. and, and and but the, the psychology of human sexuality is the only class... Smoked it. <laughs> Got an A. Got an A. I cannot Linda, believe. what did you get? I got a P. But you got a B. I was like one of the few Bs. I, <laughs> I grew up in a very um Oh, conservative... don't blame it on your parents. <laughs> don't blame it on Isolated. your parents. The, oh, okay. my gosh. Bring I cannot back. believe. Bring it back. Okay, that was yeah. fun while it lasted. Bring yeah. it back. So, okay, if, if I Googled um, favorite Father's Day gifts, mm-hmm. what would you feel, what would you think would be in the top five? For Father's Day? Yeah. Like, what, probably something the, to do with barbecuing. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Okay, so grilling to, utensils is like with, one. Yeah, because like, it's yeah, summertime. Or apron and or, okay, so probably yeah. Probably something to do with um, probably beer or drinking or bourbon or ding, something. Ding, 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 like ding. That. Like beer glasses, dr- uh, drink glasses. Yeah. Or, or beer of the month is a huge one. <laughs> okay, good, good. I would have to say um, a handy. Um, hand tool of some sort. Man, like the Leatherman, like. Which well, I, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking just like you know, Home Depot goes right. I walked through Home Depot the other day, and they've got <laughs> a whole aisle of fa- it's labeled yeah. Father's Day gifts, and there's yeah. nothing but like little screwdriver types and stuff yeah. like that. Little small tool, tool. So yeah. good job. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, on the top five, I've probably done every single one of these. The only one that I really did not try is like the hot sauce. Like there's mm-hmm. like these hot sauces and like kits that you know my my dad was never, and you were never a huge thing of. So I never really did that. But yeah, isn't that crazy? Like there's some real common things that we get for Father's Day. But, you know, um, we're really talking about and I want to speak on before you get into really sharing what men want. I want to speak from a woman's point of view, because this is the woman that walks in my door every day, if not every week, and, and really are struggling with relationships that they've tried to turn into another woman, Mm. like the man, whether it be their dad, whether it be their husband, whether it be their adult sons or teenage sons, they're trying to conform them into being like them, wired like them, responding like them. And ladies, can I just tell you, men are not wired like us. Right. Okay. And so they're going to respond to whether it be a crisis, whether it be something exciting, whether it be a struggle, like they're going to respond differently. And God has created it that way. So stop trying to feminize or um, conform your man into another woman. Hmm. Okay. And so I'm guilty of this. I've got four sons, three of them are adults. And so, you know, mommying them is not what they want. And when Mm -hmm. you, and I got married, I remember you didn't want me to be your mother. You didn't want another mom. And so I really had to learn how to love you the way you wanted to be loved. Yeah, I think it's hard. And I'm not, I don't want to, because dads want to father their kids. They want to, especially their younger girls, they want to constantly be giving advice and that kind Mm -hmm. of thing. So I don't think it's mutually exclusive to just the moms. Um, But, you know, we're talking about how moms or the ladies can relate better to the males or the fathers or the dads in this situation. Um, I consciously remember um, when I went away to college and I came back, I remember being annoyed. So a conscious thought, because I'd come back and my mom meant no Mm -hmm. harm by this at all, but she was wearing me out (laughs) with, can I do this for you? Should mm. I do this? I'll get you this. Like mm. she'd make assumptions as to what I needed or whatever. And it was like good for the first five minutes or so, <laughs> you know, cause you're, you're coming home. But then mm. you're, and then I remember saying, mom, you don't need to mother me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm totally good. I'm totally able to take care of myself, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a gift back to her, right? Mm-hmm. Like she raised me well enough to right. be able to do that. Self-sufficient. And so, and there's just sort of that sort of growth of, of pride and an ability that comes mm-hmm. through that when you take a, and this, uh, this is for you moms out there that may be listening, when you take your teenage son and you try to keep mothering him, mm. you are actually pushing him 
them away. And that usually yeah. starts to happen in the teenage years yeah. where they go, mom, 16, mom. 17, 18 years right. old. Yeah. And, and again, they're not trying to reject you as a person. They're trying mm-hmm. to reject the mothering. And I think yeah. when we allow that to trickle in to the marriage, mm-hmm. um, then it gets really kind of messy. Mm-hmm. Um it, and I don't, I, there's not ill intent here. Like, hun, you, this is something that you do, and I know you never do it with ill intent. Oh. <laughs> no, like you read something, and we read a lot of counseling type stuff. You read more than I do. I watch stuff. I, I'm a visual learner, and you'll say, hey, you should read this book. You should read mm. this book. And you are always trying to get me to read what you've read because you want me to see that. And I don't think there's Ill, any ill intent in that. But like, as soon as you do, I'm like, She's she's trying to fix me mm. again. And it's a knee-jerk reaction. And part of us being coachable, we I have to back off sometimes and go, oh, maybe mm-hmm. there's something good in there for me to grab. But it's just that whole idea that someone's trying and a man, <laughs> a man wants to mm. be in charge of himself you for know, sure. Um you just commented the other day about how somebody was making fun of you because you didn't wear sunscreen and you didn't uh, like being told, like, you know, we don't want to be told the, what to do. I, especially <laughs> as a man, like, you know, there's <laughs> somebody looks at me and says, you really should be wearing sunscreen. And I'm like, I'll take care of that myself, please. You know, like, I don't need you to Uh-oh. tell me that. And again, I, there was no ill intent mm-hmm. by the, the people doing that. Not at all. Um, but you tell your eight-year-old boy mm. he needs sunscreen. Your 18-year-old boy, you don't tell him he needs sunscreen. Mm. If he gets burnt, he gets burnt, and he deals yeah. with the natural consequences. I've said that exact phrase, maybe not the sunburn, but, you know, they're going to fall or they're going to crash. or And and the, you could see the cringe on the moms with these adult children, like, ah, like that's what I'm afraid of, right? I'm afraid they're going to yeah. fall. I'm afraid they're going to crash and burn. And, and, and they don't want to. They want to save them from that. And you wrote an article years ago on our blog. It was one of been one of the most popular nationwide, worldwide, is are you a rescue parent? Mm. And the picture had a, a boy with <laughs> bubble wrap around them. Right, and, right. and that's the point of we got to stop mothering, especially our teenage and young adult sons. But even, hun, one of the biggest fights we had when we first married was me trying to control what you wore and what you purchased as that clothing. Go well. That did not go well. <laughs> that was like one of the biggest explosions of our marriage. And uh, we call it the blue pants story, if you haven't <laughs> heard that by now. But, you know, that was me trying to push on you what the look should have been as you as a teacher or what you should wear as a man. And you didn't care for that very much. Let's be clear. Um, it's not, we're not saying that men don't want help, but men have to know that they are in charge of themselves. Mm. that they can be independent. And if they need help, they will ask for it, okay, in those kind of situations. And men aren't great at asking for help, though. But that means that they're they're okay with where it goes. Okay. Okay. So the idea, like, let's just say that um, I didn't, let's go to clothing. Clothing is not a big example for us because mm-hmm. you've long I've since dropped that my one. lesson. <laughs> yeah, and it's not a big deal. But let's just say that mm. I wore something that a lot of times when I put something on, I will look I'll you you and me. I'll say, hey, what do you think about this? Because right, right. that's when I am seeking like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, but if I wore something that didn't work, okay, um, you just don't need to say anything about it, mm. okay? Because if you do, I will do one of two things. I'll either change it and be angry. <laughs> or you will wear or it because two, I didn't I like it. I will wear it, and that would be more likely me, all right? The stubbornness would be like, uh, you know what? Now I'm going to wear it. I'm yeah. going to put a bow on it, you know? Like, <laughs> like I'm going to show it off. And then, so so it's kind of that passive aggressiveness, but I'm you're mm. trying to reclaim, no, this is mm. my territory, and I don't want you walking on it. It speaks to the territorial protection of a man. Mm. And, and that is within our nature, hmm. and we want want to protect that. And we are part of that. Like, I don't want you treading on me. Mm-hmm. I will give you permission when you, when I need that. So would you say that the first thing that a man really wants is to be able to lead and protect 
I mean, it sounds <clears throat> like you're asking for independence. You're asking for leadership in the home. And again, that means the man's got to step up and do that, right? Mm-hmm. But that us as ladies can't undermine. And we've talked about this before when it comes to parenting. A lot of our men, a lot of our dads have shut down because the women have kind of maybe overbearingly came down on them or corrected what they tried to do right. or may say it was too tough or not tough enough. And they've kind of really pushed the man away mm. from being involved in the parenting and discipline of their children. And so mm-hmm. you're saying that a man wants the independence to lead and protect his family. Yeah. Yes. The man wants to be the source of strength in the home. Mm. All right. The man wants to have his independence all right, the man wants to be uh, respected for the leadership. Mm. And so when we undermine that, if you think of what the word undermine means, if you have a foundation and you you dig the dirt under, mm. okay, you, you mine the dirt out from under the foundation, Ooh, that's good. you undermine it, the foundation will begin to fall. Mm. And so when you undermine the man's authority or strength in the home, mm. all right, he s- starts to feel like he's on shaky ground and he will back off but that's a dangerous place, mm-hmm. right? Because that's when the house starts to then the whole thing from the roof down starts to cave in. And so undermining that strength in him, mm-hmm. that the the approaches, uh, who is, all those things, you chip away at that mm-hmm. man that you married, right? right? And so that whole idea of um, how do I make sure I'm mm. not undermining. Yeah. Okay. And you use the word respect. And I think we really have to sit on that one for a while because we see that as a huge undermining in a marriage and a family, even with a dad. Um, I have clients who um, the wife is coming in and the husband's kind of just detached and kind of drifted away from the family. But if we really drill down, he is surrounded by women who are trying to undermine mm-hmm. his authority, his leadership, um, disrespecting him as a dad and a husband. And so he's just checked out. And so when we really started to drill down in that, it was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. like he doesn't feel like he's the man of the house. He's allowed to be the man of the house because all of these women have kind of disrespected him and kind of tried to feminize him and almost come and come down on him for being who God's created him to be mm-hmm. and really lost that. Yeah. The, the um, the idea of, a, of our culture, and again, I, I think we we can't blame everything on culture because at the end of the day, we have to own our own right. actions, all right? Personal responsibility. But if, if the, the trend is to um, all men are stupid and we everything a man says is just out of ignorance or whatever, um, it's becoming very common to be sarcastic or talking, you know, disrespectfully to men. Mm-hmm. And that is a huge undermining yeah. of who the man is. And so when we talk about Father's Day gifts, give that due respect, all right? Mm-hmm. Give that due respect. When the husband or the dad suggests to do something or to do it a certain way, uh, um, just you are saying, you know what, I'll go with that. Right there, you just gifted mm-hmm. him. Watch you, his spirit f- really inflate when you do that. You, it's huge. You gifted him. You know, yeah. that idea that when he suggests something, mm. sometimes we suggest something and mm. somebody, it, it could be dead on perfectly right, but the other person, in this case, the lady, feels like she has to have her spin on it. Mm. And so she'll go, well, I don't know if I agree with that. And next thing you know, as soon as she says, I don't know if I agree with that, mm. especially on matters that don't matter. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing when we're talking about something that truly matters, you know, and we and we have to have the facts right and we have to have the evidence because we're trying to maybe make a good decision. But most things aren't really that deep. They really mm-hmm. aren't. And and so the idea that somebody says, I want this and we counter it mm-hmm. right away, you just you stole the gift from mm-hmm. your husband. Yeah. Right. And so if there's one gift that you can give mm-hmm your husband to start off or the dad in your life is to show them that they're valuable through respect, Mm. right? That, that right there, you don't have to purchase it. You don't have to (laughs) go to Amazon. You don't have to do anything. You just have to say, you know what, what you provide is very valuable. And I 
appreciate that. Yeah. So let's let's just um, kind of recap some of the things you said, hon. So the man wants to feel respected in the home through their independence, giving them choices and their insight, maybe their opinions, um, the authority and leading and protecting their family. But let me ask you a hard question because I have a feeling there's some out there that are thinking this. What if your man, whether it be your dad, your husband, your adult son, teenage son, have done things that are unrespe- disrespectfully, like they, they've done things that have blown the trust, that have been harsh, have been abusive? Like, what do you do with those situations and those people, those men who have done disrespectful things? Like, mm-hmm. how do you show respect to them? There's a difference between, there, you're really digging on two things there. There's one called respect, and there's another thing called trust, mm-hmm. okay? And so I'm not asking you to trust somebody who's not trustworthy. Mm-hmm. In other words, if I say, hey, um, you know, I'm going to go take $1,000 out of the account, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go do something with it, and you know that I have a history of spending mm-hmm. it foolishly, mm-hmm. that that's a trust issue, mm-hmm. okay? The respect is you sitting down and treating me like a man and yeah. your husband and mm-hmm. saying, Okay, like I do want to support you with this, Mm -hmm. but I'm having a trust issue. Good. That's good. Right. And so the respect, I'm not pulling back respect. Mm -hmm. I am respecting you. Sometimes respect is delivering the hard news. Um, I'm not belittling you. No, you're not taking any of the money because you act like a three year old with Mm. it. That's disrespectful. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You're kind of stooping to their level then. (laughs) Yeah. But instead, you're dealing with the other component that is making you want to disrespect them. Well, I can't trust Mm -hmm. you. So I'll disrespect you. So Mm. please separate that. A man needs to be known, known that he's respected Mm. if he is not being trustworthy, which that Mm -hmm. is a huge component to this. All right. Then Mm. we need to go through the conversation of, uh, and this is, again, men are not without fault here, right? (laughs) And so men have to be Mm. able to raise their hand and say, you're right. Mm. You know, I did do that. Mm -hmm. And that is something I want to start building the trust back on. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, let's make this clear. Respect is something we give to someone because God has called us to do that. Just like forgiveness. Forgiveness is a command that God has given us. Respect is a command that he has given us to honor people because we are all God's creation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Has nothing to do with what they do, whether it's respectable stuff or not. It is how he's called us to live and how he's called us to treat people. The same with love, honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it says to love your enemies, right? And so like that person doesn't deserve anything. And, but he's still, God's called us to love and to respect people because of who God has created them to be and who he's called us to be. And mm-hmm. that is to kind of rise above the disrespectful stuff and the ugly stuff. And you're right. It's so different than trust though. Right. So ladies, gentlemen, we're called to respect one another and especially our men in our lives. They need that. And that really fills them up and just helps them to feel affirmed and esteemed and watch their whole attitude change Mm -hmm. towards you when you give them those gifts. Yeah. Another area, Mm -hmm. hon, that I think um, is important because, you know, we tend to look at what we bring to the table Mm -hmm. as being the most important thing, right? Like whatever I brought to the picnic is the best dish that's at the (laughs) picnic. I don't know. I'm not a great cook. (laughs) Right? So within ourselves, we think that whatever our gift is, Mm -hmm. is the best, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, because it's the only one we know, right? And so the idea here is, um, I know for myself personally, I want to feel like whatever I'm bringing to the table is valuable. Mm, okay. okay? It, it's valuable. And so it may not be what you bring to the table. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like in our, in our ministry, you bring to the table valued gifts that I don't like the idea you run the business in terms of just making sure the things are getting done and bills paid and all of that background stuff that I don't. But I have to believe that what I bring is valuable. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, or if I even feel like you devalue Mm -hmm. it, I will check out of that. Because I'm not going to go to a picnic and bring (laughs) something that people don't eat. Yes. I just won't go to the picnic anymore. And so the idea here is whatever your man brings to the table Mm. in your family, 
Okay. Maybe it's, he's a hard worker. Mm. You know, the, the guy might go out every day and just get dirty and nasty mm. and full of sweat. And, you know, maybe he drives an old pickup truck. And so they're, you know, to the outside world, maybe that's just not the most flattering thing, but that man needs mm. to know that his family, his wife mm. goes, you know what? You provide so much mm -hmm. value for what you do for us. Yes. It's got to be valuable. It, it could be humor. All right. Like, you know, maybe he's not the serious guy, but mm -hmm. maybe he's the fun guy. Mm -hmm. And so you have to put, bring out his dish that he mm -hmm. brings to the picnic and you have to mm -hmm. say, hey, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you do that, that makes that man mm -hmm. go, you know what? I'm going to keep bringing this. Yes. Yes. So I say the phrase all the time to my clients, what's praised is repeated. And so if you catch your man doing something that you appreciate, like working hard, like maybe watching the kids while you took a shower. Maybe it's, you know, um, d starting dinner because you weren't home yet. Like whatever it is that you appreciate, please, please praise that. Like you said, show them that they, you appreciate it and that's valuable to you, whether it be making the paycheck for the family, whether it be working in the yard for the home. You know, those are the things that you've got to catch. And when you praise them, man, he wants to work extra hard for you because you noticed that he has value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, another gift that we can give our dads is just time, mm -hmm. just time. Um, dads are different, hmm. um, in the sense that they don't really need a lot of gifts, right? They just want the people in their life to be able to, to check in, right. And to be around mm -hmm. them. Um, and, and just, uh, you've said it before, hun, like, I don't think I realized this, but you used to drive me crazy with, I would say we'd have a Jeep and we had a Jeep and I'd say, let's just go for mm -hmm. uh, a Sunday ride. Mm -hmm. And you would say, that's just a waste of time. <laughs> like, where are we like, going? We're busy. <laughs> yeah. Like, where are we going? And I, and I was just like, we're just going, yeah. like, we're just going. And I really didn't want the kids around. I didn't want to, I just wanted mm -hmm. you and I to just go and mm -hmm. go be with each other. Right. And I think it's just that connectedness. Right. But I think it's a very interesting difference though, hon. And I don't know if women notice this, but guys really don't have to be sitting across from you, like at a coffee shop, chit-chatting. Okay. They most actually, likely not. Most likely not. Yeah. They'd rather be sitting side by side. If you go over to your dad's house and you're literally sitting there watching the Reds game with them, they're being filled. When you're driving in a Jeep with your man, like he's being filled. If you walk alongside him in a park, he's feeling filled. Like it's not this major connected time where you're talking a lot of words. It's shoulder to shoulder. You can mm -hmm. literally be sitting in the garage while he is changing the oil in his car and he feels loved and connected with you. Well, And he will say, <laughs> we did this together. Yeah. And he'll say, thank you. And you're like, I seriously just sat in the garage yeah. while you changed the oil. Yeah, I, You know, you used to <laughs> like when you would do a first date, um, they would talk about, well, you never go to a movie because in a first date, you, <laughs> you go to a movie, you don't even get to talk to this person. That might be true for first dates, mm. but as we get older, hmm. men tend to talk less <laughs> because, They've always talked less than because women. You, you already know each other. Right. Mm. And so the idea that we'd go to a coffee shop and sit across from each other and just start gabbing like us guys are like, what else do we have to talk about? <laughs> okay. But the idea of going to a movie with the man you've been married with for 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, if you both like movies, now, let's, th let's, then the idea is like, th that's an enjoy, like an enjoyable time let, together. Let's clarify. We still believe that it's important to talk with your oh, person. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Not at all. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with that, mm -hmm. but the idea that, you know, we have to always go and talk. That's not no. how many men are wired. I'm now we do go unto our spells. Yes. You, you yeah. know, I, I find that with myself, you mm -hmm. are a talker, probably whatever. I'm just going to exaggerate and say you're 10 Easy. to one. Okay. Easy. Um, but all of a sudden, once in a while, I get the old diary of the mouth <laughs> and I will start talking like that. And I kind of even mm -hmm. laugh at myself. I'm like, man, like I'm on a roll here. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you like it sitting side by side 
in watching the news together. Like we don't have to say a word and you like it. You will wait. You will pause the news and wait for me to get there until- And I think you intentionally wait longer <laughs> and longer and longer till I fall asleep and you go, well, we might as well go to bed. But you know, it's the Reds game, the Bengals game. I've heard women say that all like, we don't have to say a word, but he just feels my presence. And so that's a gift. It's a gift you give to your man that maybe doesn't fill you as a woman, but does for the man. Yeah. Okay. So we got to wrap things up. You know, mm -hmm. the whole idea here um, for our fathers, first off, let's make sure that we believe that dads are an essential part mm -hmm. of the, the family, of the marriage, the upbringing of our children. Let's do everything we can to start to celebrate that. Yes, we're going to celebrate moms, but if we really mm -hmm. want to, to change the fabric of our nation, mm -hmm. it is not through all of these other things, you know, throwing money at through government programs. It is reestablishing dad's love and strength mm -hmm. in that home, okay? So first and foremost, that's why we are taking the time to say, do not throw dad overboard mm -mm. because everybody drowns. Or under the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know, I'm trying to, to help think like a man here in the case of helping ladies to understand Man, we just want to we just want to be respected and mm -hmm. felt like we are of value. Yeah. And anything that undermines that, all right, is something that chips away at what then mm. we reciprocate back with. Yeah. And so not always, like sometimes we just have bad dudes out there, right? Mm. But oftentimes if you're if your man is not behaving well, mm. it's because he's probably not felt valued mm. or he's felt disrespected. And yeah. he's he's he reciprocates with the negative. Like yeah. maybe he's not as loving. Maybe he is kind mm -hmm. of crude or harsh. Okay. And so settling this all back and having some of these conversations, maybe even getting help um, mm -hmm. of like, where do we bring it back to ground zero so we can grow this to a healthy direction? Yeah. So we know that a majority of our viewers and subscribers are women. So ladies, I'm going to give you a little challenge. Okay. It's called the respect test. And just for uh, over the weekend or a couple of days, I want you to give the men in your life, whether it be your dad, whether it be your husband, whether it be your adult sons, teenage sons, I want you to give them unconditional respect. I want you to honor their opinion and their insight. I want you to cheer on and praise their authority and their leadership in the home. I want you to give them that shoulder to shoulder connection and time, regardless if it's in the garage or sitting on the couch. I want you just to do that for a couple of days. And then I want you to notice how it changes the relationship with the man. Okay. Don't tell them you're doing it because then they'll think you're just, you know, playing a trick on them. I want you to really give it a couple of days to see what that unconditional respect, what kind of gift it is to the men in your life. Yeah. And if I would just add to that, add a little bit of praise for yes. something that they bring that is valuable to the mm -hmm. family or the relationship. Okay. Yep. Maybe you haven't done that lately, but the mm -hmm. idea that you just say, Hey, I just want to thank you for the hours you're putting in, yeah. or I want to thank you for how you, you play with the kids or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, just do that and, and watch what starts to happen. Yeah. Okay. Because the dad by his very mm -hmm. nature is the leader of the home. And I, I just, what I say by that is there's a strength in him that when he brings calmness into the house, the house becomes yeah. more calm. That's God's intention. That's his design. Yeah. It, it, this is not just from Earl and Linda here. Mm -hmm. This is like when, when so dad goes, often goes the family mm -hmm. and it's not to diminish mom's strength at all, but there's a different persona that comes out. Mm -hmm. If dad is an angry person, mm -hmm. he will put tension in the house and, and just that mm -hmm. anger in the house. If he's a calm person, you'll get a different feel in the house. And so yeah. help bring out his best and watch what he brings out in your home. Yeah. I think the anger really, hun, is a lot of times is poking the bear. Like we are pouring on that disrespect and we are really dishonest them and they don't know what to do about that. Their boundaries are being crushed, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to, they don't have the words or vocabulary. And so sometimes just this respect test kind of shows you, wow, that's where that anger and that resentment and that ugliness is coming from. Cause I have been kind of pouring into that. So really give it a chance and see how God really blesses that.
All right. So we want to wish all of our dads out mm -hmm. there a happy Father's Day. We thank you for all that you do. Continue doing and doing better and better each day by your family and by yourself and by God. We want to thank all mm -hmm. of the folks out there that are listening and sharing our shows. Please share the shows. Yeah. Uh, please give us five-star ratings. Those just help get the messaging mm -hmm. out better. And also we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Hummel Insurance Group, Casey's Outdoor Solutions, and Maxwell Construction. So we want to thank all of you guys enjoy uh your week as it uh merle's comes, month <laughs> enjoy my month enjoy merle's have, month <laughs> have some fun with my month don't don't tread on my month mm -hmm. yeah so thank you so much for listening to rock solid radio building a stronger community one family at a time make it a great day and happy birthday hon this might be a great time on air to make a great request of a Oh, Gift no. Of some sort. no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm I, giving you I think, what you need, respect. I, I don't know. Or like, a toy. What, do you, what toy I'm do you thinking, want? I don't know. A, a new bike. A bike or something? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Come on. Now's that a good wasn't time. On, that wasn't on the list. I just added it. I just added it. <laughs> Have a good day. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Hummel Insurance Group for sponsoring today's show. Hummel Insurance Group now owns and operates seven different offices located throughout the tri-state area. For over 50 years now, the Hummel Insurance Group has been assisting customers with insurance needs and questions. For all your insurance needs, contact Hummel Insurance Group at 812-537-1785. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana.